Hello, and thanks for watching Fishing in Germany. Uh, I just got back from a decent night at the river, um, especially considering how it's been the last couple months of not catching anything. Uh, I caught two good-sized chubs. Um, one I actually got on video that I'll put at the end of this video. And the second one, my camera was, the battery was dead, and it was already dark anyway, so I wouldn't have gotten much for footage anyways. Um, so I have video of the first one getting caught and uh, a few pictures you'll see in a minute here. Um, I was fishing with corn on hair rigs that I made. So um, I'm going to show in this video how I tie these hair rigs. It's really simple. You need basically just line, hook, and corn. And um, I've done this a few different ways and I found this way to be the best because the corn will eventually come off the hair. And this way it's a lot easier to re-rig it without having to tie a whole new rig uh, to just rebate it, basically. Um, I was using two poles. One was a method feeder, one was a cage feeder. I caught both of the chubs on the same pole with a cage feeder. The only thing really different I was doing between the two was, because um, I got bites on both. The only thing different I was doing is on the one I caught with, it was on a, a bite alarm and another rod rest. So it was, you know, the, the tip of the poles pointing towards where the line is. And I had the drag open and also the switch engaged for the reel to back, back wind, you know, so it can pull out really freely, no resistance. On the other pole, I had a method feeder and um, it's a closest thing I have to a feeder fishing rod. So the tip is very, very sensitive and very light and just a bell alarm on there and set up normal with a rod holder. So I was getting quite a few bites on that as well, but nothing would hook up. And I think especially this time of year, that makes a big difference because the fish are a little bit more sluggish. They're a bit more wary. So if they're feeling any resistance, they'll drop the bait before you have a chance to hook it. Um, with the bite alarm and the, the drag open, you know, they can, you hear it running off with it. You don't even need a bite alarm, you know, um, you'll hear your drag going if, if you get a run. Um, I also have, I have a habit of always keeping bells at the end of my rods too. So I have like multiple alerts for, uh, any indication of a bite. Um, so yeah, as I was mentioning before, the last couple of months I was just blanking here. It's really hard to catch anything. And now the fish activity has really changed a lot. Um, on the f 1st of January, I caught, I broke the blank and caught a chub. Um, yesterday I went out and I was getting a ton of bites, but I didn't get anything. I was with my neighbor though, who actually ended up with a decent little mirror carp. I think it was 3.3 kilo. Um, and again on corn and I mean that's also a tr little tip there if you're blanking a lot try taking someone with you to go fishing that doesn't fish very often sometimes they'll have that beginner's luck and even if you're not catching and you're with someone that does catch it kind of helps boost confidence and yeah so that's a little trick there anyway um, tomorrow I'm going to head off to a private pond to do trout fishing I actually got offered today to be on a cooking show. It's based primarily on, um, they, they take different musicians from metal bands and extreme metal bands and have them show their recipes. And this season, I guess it's based on people who hunt or fish. And they asked me to do a video of it, of one of my recipes. So I'm going to go to this pond where I almost always have luck with trout. Normally trout season's closed here uh, in Germany, but, um, this place is open all year long because it's privately owned. Uh, hopefully get some trout and get some video, some footage of catching, how to clean, and I'm going to show my method of smoking them for the for the series. And that, I guess it should be some out sometime in spring, so we can watch for that in the future. But yeah, I'm going to switch cameras now and show how to tie this rig. It's really, really simple, but very effective. And after that, you'll see the footage I got of catching the first chub today. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. Please subscribe. I'm going to be having a lot more videos coming now that the fish activity is starting to increase again. That's it. See you next time. All right. So this is a way to make a very easy herring for corn that you don't need any special equipment. Um, basically, you need some fishing line, a hook. Pair of scissors is going to help. 
And something for like a bait stopper. You don't even need to use like boily stops or anything. You can just use a twig like this, a piece of grass, whatever. Only thing optional is a bathing needle. Um, these kind with, see if you can see it's got a little barb at the end to hook the line. And if you don't have a baiting needle, you can actually just take a fishing hook and straighten it out with a pair of pliers and it'll do the same job basically. So first I'm going to start off with the hook link. Um, when I'm using corn, I can get chub or bream and sometimes pretty big carp. So I like to use a little bit heavier line in case I do get a carp. This is um, a little over seven kilo test. It works fine for me. I'm not that picky about the hook link line. And how long you want it is up to you. Um, you want to experiment with that. In the winter time, I tend to keep them up quite a bit shorter. I'm usually fishing this on a method feeder or a cage feeder, so I keep it pretty short. Cut it a bit longer so you have enough to work with. And the first step is to just tie a simple loop at one end. So I just double over the string and just make like an overhand nut. And I try to keep the loop fairly small. Just makes it easier to keep the bait on. And it doesn't even have to be double knotted, it's just, it's not important for it to be that strong. And that's it. Next, you can already put the corn on actually. Um, but what I like about this rig is the corn will fall off eventually or it gets bitten off. So instead of having to tie a new rig each time, I like to be able to, after it's on the hook, be able to rebate it with more corn. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tie this onto the hook now. So I'll show you how I rebate it. And to do this, I'm using a bit bigger hook than I normally use just to make it easier to see in the video. Um, I'm going to use a knotless knot, real easy to tie. You go through the back of the eye. And you want to leave... Actually, I trim this tag end really fast. The length of your hair is up to you, how many pieces of corn you want to put on it. I usually try to keep the bait sitting fairly close to the hook. So, for me, something like that is good. That'll let me put like two or three pieces of corn easily on that. So I'm going to hold this hair end with the hook. And now I wrap this part around the shaft of the hook. Several times. Depends on the size of the hook. At least like I try to get about five wraps at least. Kind of tighten it up. And I'm going to keep grabbing it with the free fingers here. Keep tension on it, and then I put that end back through the back of the eye. And pull it tight. And that's just your knotless knot. And then at the top, I'm going to tie a surgeon's loop. It's basically like the loop I just tied, but I'm going to double knot it. So. double over the string and then with that piece you make two kind of overhand knots go through the loop twice with the end basically And 
and always important, don't pull it too fast. Pull it kind of gently and wet it. Otherwise, the friction is going to make a weak point, and you'll break your line that way. So there we have the loop. Now I'll go ahead and trim that tag end. There we have it. And now we'll put the cord on. So this is where I said a baiting needle will be helpful, but you can use a hook just straighten out if you don't have one. I like to run just like straight through the side of the corn. Straight through the middle of it. So it stays on pretty well. And depending on how much hair you left on there, the length of it, two or three pieces. So now we use that little, you know, if you're using a hook, it'd be the barb to just catch that hair. Keep some tension on it and just slide the corn over the hair. And that's where I'll use like a twig or something like that. And that's just going to keep the corn from sliding off. Actually easier to cut it after you get it on. Like I said, you can use a bait stopper, plastic, really no, not necessary though, this works fine. And there you have it. And um, of course you can just put the corn directly on the hook. If you're doing that, I found the best way is again, just go straight through the side of the middle of it. Like that. But I found chances of hooking the fish are a lot better when you're using a hair. And that's it, really, really easy. You don't need any special equipment, pretty much everything you should normally have in your tackle box. Thanks for watching.